Welcome to our Five on Five. Please be joined today by Republican State Senator Herman Baird Sugar. Good to see you, sir. Good seeing you. So we have you here today because you were elected Senate Minority Leader. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. And that's a, a, a vote from your fellow Republicans in the Senate. That's correct. It was a unanimous vote. And so I'm following Senator Winters, who wishes to uh, continue on with her uh, Ways and Means Committee, uh, which she's very good at. And she's also worked on health care and um, prison reform. So you got to make a choice. You can't do both. You know, mm -hmm. the workload is just too much. So she chose to go back to doing those things, which okay. she's done for decades. Yeah, wow. Okay. And, and you mentioned unanimous. Congratulations. It's very exciting. And Carl Wilson, fellow Republican in Grants Pass, yeah. elected uh, House Minority Leader. So that's pretty, pretty exciting for Southern Oregon Republicans. Yep. What does that mean? Is that an advantage, if you will, for Southern Oregon Republicans to have this voice? Um, yeah, you know, I mean, we're going to, uh, I guess Carl and I both, you know, we look at uh, rural Oregon. You know, we, rep we represent rural Oregon. And so I think that, yeah, I think rural Oregon will probably have a, a louder voice in uh, this session. But there's been some disappointment in, in some corners of especially our region in Governor Brown's budget, uh, proposed budget in respect to wildfire season. Um, how will you use your power uh, to make sure that's uh, an active discussion in Salem? Well, I will tell you that the governor has always consulted me on the, on the uh, uh, natural resource issues, especially wildland fire. But, you know, realistically in Southern Oregon, um, you know, it's the federal lands that are really giving us the problems. And uh, we got to keep putting pressure and we got to keep um, addressing those issues at the federal level. It's not as much as a state issue as it is a federal. Is there issue. anything the state can do, whether it's a, it's a vote, you know, a proclamation, a letter, you know, <laughs> anything like that, that, that might actually uh, get some attention in, in D.C.? Yeah, we do have a, a I do have a, uh, what we call it is a joint memorial, which is basically a letter to Congress from the legislature. If I can get that passed, you know, it, it will go to Congress. But uh, given all the changes in D.C. here, I, I don't know where, you know, how many ears will listen to it. So we'll, we'll see. But um, I'm going to keep working on those natural resource issues just like I've always had. And uh, I've worked on those for years and years and years, and I'll continue to work on that. Okay. We're going to take a quick commercial break. Have much more in just a moment. Stay with us. Welcome back to our Five on Five. Again, we're here with Senate Minority Leader Herman Barrett Sugar, State Senator. Thanks for being here today. So you're looking at a supermajority situation with the Democrats. Does that leave you guys powerless? No, it doesn't. If, if we can pull one Democrat, um, then we can stop a tax vote in the Senate. All it takes is one. All it takes is one. And uh, I have a really good working relationship with Senator Betsy Johnson. And uh, so it, it's possible. Okay. And, and there's a lot of things, a lot of ambitious plans um, from the Democrats right now. Is there anything that you're kind of watching that you're hoping uh, to, to stop or, or to assist on? <laughs> well, uh, the governor's proposed budget is uh, there's a $2 billion ask in there. And that's a lot of money for 4 million Oregonians. So $2 billion is $2,000 million. See, that, that sinks in a little different, doesn't it, than $2 billion. So it's $2,000 million she's ask, asking for uh, to raise taxes on 4 million Oregonians. That's a lot of money. Yeah, and so uh, also I understand Democrats are looking at, at climate change uh, bills, uh, carbon emissions, I believe is the specific Yeah, that word. would be the uh, cap and trade, which is basically going to be a tax on carbon. Um, that's going to be pretty interesting. Um, at the end of the day, uh, when you when all the dust settles, what it really will be is a tax on, on fuel. And uh, I, uh, it would not surprise me if this passes through that by 2024, which isn't too far away, you could see at least 50 percent, 50 cents per gallon more by 2024. Per gallon more. More. From where we are right now. That's okay. right. All right. Okay. Yeah. Cause some people probably don't know uh, how much they pay in the gas. That's tax. that's uh, that's approaching a dollar per gallon pretty quickly. Wow. Okay. All right. So the interesting. All right. So what's your first priority uh, when you get to Salem in, in a couple months? Well, we you know the the Democrats outvote us in the Senate. They outvote us in the House, and we have a Democrat governor. So what Republicans have to do, we have to do two things. One, we have to support legislation that is good, and which is most legislation is good. We, we agree on a lot more than we disagree. But the taxation stuff, we have to come forward um, and show the contrast and show that our ideas are better 
than their ideas. And I think that's, I think that's something that has been missing with Republicans in this state is to show the contrast. What do Republicans have to offer? What ideas do we have? And why are they better? And I think we really need to concentrate on showing that contrast. Okay, so instead of saying no, say, right. hey, try this. Exactly. I do okay. not want to be the party of no. Okay. That so gets us so engage the conversation. I've, I've Absolutely. Talked about you. They have a supermajority. You want to be part of the process. That's right. Okay. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. Congratulations. Thank you. Senate Minority Happy Leader. holidays. Appreciate. Happy holidays to you. Stay with us. We'll be right back.